no longer royals, but not yet fully Hollywood celebrities. They were always trying to get stuff for free. 15 million pounds. And, how many? and they deliver 13 half hour episodes. And how? pathetic. And you... Wouldn't doing a series like this just bring more attention on themselves? The illiterate one and her husband are getting slightly better at making photos look like they were randomly taken. Meghan was undoubtedly the worst person he'd ever had to work with in his whole of his life because she bullied him so mercilessly. Is it worth dumping me for the rest of my life? Prince Harry is 35. The fact he was 35 and wanted to become financially independent. We could always spend some of my inheritance from mummy. Let's get into it. Hey entrepreneurs, have you ever thought starting an online store was out of reach? Think again. Now imagine effortlessly selling products or skills and hearing that satisfying cha-ching sound with every sale. Shopify, the global commerce platform, has your back at every business stage, from launching your online shop to celebrating those million orders milestones. Whether you're into selling sleuthing supplies or marketing mystery merch, Shopify is your go-to platform. When reflecting on businesses that have faced challenges, Shopify became became the game changer. It not only helped them overcome struggles, but propelled them to new heights. The transformation before and after for small businesses and large is truly remarkable. Sign up for a $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash Sloan, S-L-O-A-N. Go to shopify.com slash Sloan to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash Sloan. Thank you and enjoy this episode. Welcome back to Let's Get Into a Podcast with me, Sloan. I know, I know it's been a while since I've been back on here, but we are back. We are posting every week and we've got some topics we need to talk about. One, about the royal family, which honestly I never thought I would do. It's one of my most requested main channel topics and I thought if we're going to take this deep dive, let's take it on the Let's Get Into a Podcast. We're going to be talking about Meghan Markle and her husband, Prince Harry. Well, former Prince Harry. We're going to talk about their spot deal drama, their Netflix deal drama, their privacy issues and hypocrisy. Because honestly, that's what really irks me about this couple. They go around complaining that they don't have privacy, yet they're putting their private life out there. It's kind of like that Wendy Williams meme where she's crying and she's like, I would tell you guys to stop, but you know, I'm doing it myself. I would ask you to respect our privacy, but please, I don't respect people's privacy. That's why I do the hot topics. We're also going to talk about how they have been rude, entitled, they bully their staff, which Princess Diana would never stand for. We're going to talk about the family isolation, quitting the royal family, and then lying about Oprah, which you guys know, we're not the biggest fans of Oprah out here, but Oprah has her issues too. So how does someone like Meghan Markle and Prince Harry get into the position where they have this royal status, they could be beloved, but they kind of actively decide not to be? Or are they just that bad? Are they genuinely bad people? I want you guys to decide. Part of the issues that Harry and Meghan have run into is that they are currently beefing with the royal family. It's who gave them their power and they're completely disrespecting them. Which I get it, the royals have their own set of issues, but I think a lot of people, you know, they don't really like to see someone leave a group or leave a position of privilege and then talk so badly about them. It just seems like they're completely ungrateful for what they have. Now you see that this couple goes through some like internal battle of wanting to be private, wanting to have a kind of like a normal life, but then doing the complete opposite because they realize they're going to get money by talking about the scandals from the royal family. And when they're not leveraging that, they're going out and acting like they are such elites. That they are just entitled to free things from everyone. The reason why they were called grifters is that they were always trying to get stuff for free. So Ooh. they would like ask to fly on the private jet of one of the executives at Spotify or Netflix to go like do some recordings in a beach house or oh something like gosh. that to do some work and maybe some ideation, brainstorming. Oh anyway, and apparently they did and they were at a dinner with like some other powerful, very rich people who mm -hmm. also had a beach home. And apparently Megan like singled out this really wealthy <gasps> woman and was like kind of like ingratiating herself with her. And the next yeah. day, Harry texted to ask if they could buy borrow their beach house so i guess the woman says yes to be nice and then harry responds and asks if they can take their private jet to go to the beach <gasps> house 
Yeah. So these are the kind of people we are working with. And I don't want to shade or disrespect, you know, the UK or their culture. But, you know, Harry has never. I mean, if you are a lay person like myself, I've been working since I was like 15 years old. Before that, I did swim coaching. I worked my entire life. So I don't expect anything from anyone. But that type of mentality. I mean, there's a reason I'm not surrounded by those people because I don't have those things to give. But I also would never want to be around that type of person who just like takes as much as they can. And it's not like they are working hard. I mean, they had a podcast deal, $20 million podcast deal, and it completely collapsed. In 2020, Archwell Studio, a Sussex podcast production company, signed an exclusive $20 million deal with Spotify to produce uplifting audio projects. Spotify made a lot of noise at the time of how proud they were to partner with the pair and how wonderful and inspiring Meghan and Harry are. And while anyone would be happy about this podcast, deal. I mean, $20 million. I could only dream of it. These two, it doesn't really make sense for them because how have you gone the last few years complaining about privacy and then again, signing a big deal where you're going to open up about everything? They are no longer royals, but not yet fully Hollywood celebrities. They have been very, very clear that they want the media out of their business. And yet they are stepping into mediums as quote unquote Hollywood celebrities that require them to actually share some of that personal life that they have been railing against for so long in the courts, no less. So I think that they are in fame purgatory. They are no longer royals, but not yet fully Hollywood celebrities. Yeah, I don't know what they are. I don't know if they know what they are. So the royal protocol is You're quiet, you're seen, you're not heard, you don't share personal things, you're there to serve people. That's what they were. But if you're now in Hollywood, living in California, and the celebrity lifestyle is such that you must give, that's the exchange in Hollywood, you must give some personal to get some kind of adulation and money back, and they don't wanna do that either. Now, the podcast did come into fruition. Less than a year after the launch of Megan's debut podcast, the partnership was over. Sources suggested the deal ended prematurely because the former royals were unproductive. It took them two years to release 12 episodes. Can you imagine? And the podcast wasn't in-depth reportage. Essentially, Megan was just going through her address book and calling anyone who would show up. I think one of the main issues is Megan didn't really know what she was going to do with this podcast and what the theme was. And honestly... I wouldn't be surprised if these two just kind of want to get paid to show up. There was no real motivation. And to host a podcast, you have to have a direction. Unfortunately, it's a sad day for Meghan Markle and everybody at the compound in Montecito. Her podcast, Archetypes, has been canceled by Spotify. According to the Wall Street Journal, Spotify laid off 2% of their workforce, and that 2% happened to be everybody who worked on Meghan Markle's podcast. Now, personally, I'm not shocked the show got canceled because when it was announced, Meghan made it seem like she was going to have world leaders and heads of state, and then she ended up having Paris Hilton. I thought we were going to have Michelle Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Oprah, Barack Obama, people that were up Meghan Markle's lane that were world famous. I think what Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are realizing, as well as the rest of the entertainment industry, is that the projects they put out that do well have to do with the royal family. What makes them interesting is the royal family. So the six-part docuseries, the book, the sit-down tell-all with Oprah, those things are a success. But when they try to go off and do these other things on their own, they kind of flop. Getting more into the fallout with Spotify, they were not happy with Megan's performance. It was not $20 million worth. Actually, a CEO of a talent agency, UTA, you know, a talent agency, one of the big ones. I'm actually with WME, but um, maybe one day with UTA. (laughs) Who knows? Never mind. We're not going to get there. But anyways, uh, this really important person in entertainment said, turns out Megan Markle was not great at audio talent or necessarily any kind of talent. And he said, you know, just because you're famous doesn't make you great at something. Hmm, that's the real tea. Bill Simmons, Spotify's head of podcast innovation and monetization said, I wish we had never been involved in the Megan and Harry leave Spotify negotiation. They are effing grifters. That's the podcast title we should have launched them with. I've got to get drunk one night and tell the story of the Zoom I had with Harry to try to help him with a podcast idea. It's one of my best stories. F them, the grifters. Mr. Simmons was not holding back. He said that he was in charge of trying to make this podcast make money. That's what his role is there. He had to deal with 
with these people and uh, he probably didn't want to because it's all like a name thing like Spotify does a deal with like former royals oh like such a big deal but he saw right in the beginning that these people wanted their check from Spotify and they weren't going to go and produce you know amazing content Mr. Simmons has his own podcast and he said about the pair you live in effing Montecito, which is in California, and nobody cares what you have to say about anything unless you talk about the royal family. Now, Harry and Meghan haven't officially responded, but according to the Daily Mail, which sometimes posts fake news, the pair have privately blamed bad luck for their failure to produce content for Spotify, as well as Netflix, blaming COVID, the economic woes, the death of the queen. The word is that these two just think that they are very unlucky, convincing themselves in a delusional way. Actually, I created my main channel, which we are getting close to a million subscribers back in COVID. So COVID was the time to make content. COVID was not the problem. I mean, I know how COVID is a problem. Yeah, I'm not going to. It was a major problem. It was a pandemic. But as far as like, like earlier, we heard that clip where like they took, they wanted to, you know, fly out to a beach house to record some audio. Like they could have totally recorded audio wherever they need to be. Like they are former royals they can call and get a whole studio built up in whatever home they are and but it just like they didn't want to actually do this in the first place obviously it must have ended up you know so badly you know i don't know how much they did get paid of the total amount but you know they feel ripped off i mean spotify obviously they were promised the world and come on three they years did not deliver. three years 15 million pounds and, how many, and they deliver 13 half hour episodes and it's how, pathetic and did you see how many producers were actually on yeah, hundreds yeah and well, now netflix wants to pull out too so this is disastrous well, we don't there. know we don't I, know I mean, we don't we know that's what netflix, i've been told Nina, and you know i have not paid sources know. on There's this been, netflix wants to follow spotify out the door and dump well, the well, substance why now, we've been spending a lot of time on Spotify, and we keep hearing about Netflix. So let's talk about what happened with Netflix. In their 2022 docuseries, Harry and Meghan, they open up about their relationship and Meghan's experience with the royal family. In the second episode, the pair shared that the royals had a lot of issues with Meghan and her acting career. The couple also revealed in their interview that their engagement was rehearsed, noting that they weren't allowed to tell their story. Their engagement was rehearsed. Mm. I mean, well, she is an actress. But really, they took a $100 million deal from Netflix to compromise their privacy and to sell out their families. So really, these people want their cake and they want to eat it too. Like, they want to act like they are victims and victimize themselves for content, which I'm not negating that they have gone through a lot. I mean, I think a lot of celebrities go through tons but also at the same time it's hard for people like i've said this entire episode to hear their wishes of a quiet life but then to do a hundred million dollar deal with netflix you are making people want to kill me it's not just a tabloid it's not just some story you are making me scared right and like that night to be up and down in the middle of the night looking down my hallway like are we safe are the doors locked is security on is everything that's real. We learned a lot about this couple from this docuseries, and they said a lot. So let's pick it apart. So we got three episodes from this couple. It started from when they met and throughout their relationship into their marriage and their post-royal life. Unfortunately, we didn't get a lot of hot new tea because they've already been spilling it all. Like, they don't have anything else to share because they've said it all, so they're just kind of, like, trying to make some things. And actually, there were some, like, photographers, some paparazzis who feel like they were you know framed by this couple in a way like they blamed certain photographers and you know people the paparazzi who would follow them and the paparazzis actually responded saying like none of this really actually happened like i guess at one point they were making a whole story about a photographer and they used the wrong photographer like a, a, a picture of another photographer to implicate him in this story perhaps one of the worst stills that they used was this which was literally an image of donald trump's lawyer leaving his new york apartment and they used it in their trailer to show that they're again being hounded by the press yet again no evidence all fake footage i mean it's crazy and then this photo from the tripping of the color in 2019 was actually cropped to make it look like they were on the far side whereas actually as you can see the queen right there is always in the middle. So they've cropped it to look like they were cropped out of the family. I mean, this is just like, 
the lies have already started. The, the thing hasn't even dropped. So a lot of the evidence wasn't adding up in the docuseries, but of course they have their excuses. Someone from their team said that they use stock images to tell a story. It's not meant to be, you know, an actual truth. It's just to give a visual. And when this trailer came out, people were already clocking some inconsistencies and they're like, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. These won't be, you know, projected this way in the docuseries. It's just a quick, like, you know, scandalous trailer trying to drum up some attention for something that won't have a lot of new information. Another photographer spoke out and said that he noticed an image used in the trailer and it was conveniently cropped to make it seem like Harry is fighting the paparazzi because him and Meghan are going through so much and his relationship with Meghan is so scandalous. He's leaving the royals. He's fighting for his life in this photo. But this photo was taken with his ex-girlfriend long ago and this photographer said that was not the case. Why are you guys using these old images to make it seem like he's currently going against something that he's not. The Netflix documentary hasn't even aired yet, and the lies are coming in thick and fast. I mean, even BBC is over it. Okay, first of all, this image used in the trailer to make Harry look like a victim yet again is actually a photo of him taken with his ex Chelsea Davy at Heathrow. I mean, come on. Then, this sinister photo that looks like they're being targeted by a predator photographer, it's actually by a chosen photographer that was meant to capture their trip to South Africa. Like, this was an authorized photo, but that's not even bad compared to this. They showed this footage in the trailer to show that they were being hounded and chased by paparazzi. It's actually real footage from a trial that Katie Price attended in court. Literally nothing to do with them, but they still used it in the Netflix trailer. Again, this key image that they used in the trailer, the black and white one for dramatic effect, is actually from a premiere in 2011 for a Harry Potter film. This was like five years before they even met. I mean, for a couple who has been accredited for not being able to create content, it's pretty sad to see that their love story is told with B-roll and photos that are so irrelevant. Like, do they really think that nobody would notice? And honestly, that's a big fault on Netflix right there for allowing that to happen, because I know for goddamn sure that Harry and Meghan aren't editing anything. I feel like they're the type to not even like rewatch it before they post it. They're like, just do it. Go ahead. The royal family did respond to the docuseries. They were not happy about it. And they said it was not a good move to repair the couple's relationship with the family. The general consensus amongst the royals is that Harry and Meghan aren't doing themselves any favors by speaking out about the family. They're digging themselves into a deeper hole with all these tell-alls. William, his brother, was also disappointed over the show. William was hoping they could move on after the CBS interview. Oh my gosh. But Harry airing his dirty laundry has only heightened the conflict between the two brothers and resulted them in taking a step backwards. Kate feels hurt and betrayed that Harry would do this to her too, especially as the pair used to be close before Meghan. Now, nobody wants to see two brothers fighting, and I'm sure Princess Diana would be pretty sad to watch this feud. But William has every reason to be upset. If my brother was doing that, I would be pissed. I mean, you are gifted this amazing life. You are bitching about it, bitching about the privacy issues, and then you're doing these, like, PR stunts, these documentaries. You need to pick a lane. Hey entrepreneurs, have you ever thought starting an online store was out of reach? Think again. Now imagine effortlessly selling products or skills and hearing that satisfying cha-ching sound with every sale, all thanks to Shopify. Shopify, the global commerce platform, has your back at every business stage, from launching your online shop to celebrating those million orders milestones. Whether you're into selling sleuthing supplies or marketing mystery merch, Shopify is your go-to platform. Sell efficiently with Shopify magic your ai powered all-star as you guys know ai is all the rage and shopify has the latest technology when reflecting on businesses that have faced challenges shopify became the game changer it not only helped them overcome struggles but propelled them to new heights the transformation before and after for small businesses and large is truly remarkable did you guys know shopify powers 10 percent of all e-commerce in the u.s join the ranks of successful entrepreneurs like all birds rothy and Brooklinen who trust Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash Sloan, S-L-O-A-N. Go to shopify.com slash Sloan to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash Sloan. Thank you and enjoy this episode. 
Now let's get into this hypocrisy, because in November 2016, when Harry and Meghan started dating, Harry actually published a letter asking for privacy and for people and the media to back off, saying that he was concerned about her safety and their relationship was nobody's business. This was released through the palace, so it was official word, and it was from Prince Harry. Which, honestly, this is a great move for the beginning of the relationship. You know, Meghan's not doing well. I think this is great if they actually want the privacy. Harry was not having any of the hate directed towards Meghan, saying that there's a lot of sexism, some racism, a lot of social media trolls, and the magazines are popping off, which is pretty typical for any, like, you know, female figure in the royal family, they are constantly scrutinized. I mean, there's really no pleasing anyone. When Meghan and Harry were dating, she was filming for the show Suits. And actually, there were headlines that Meghan was asking for time off from filming because she was struggling with this new relationship and all the attention. Now, it's pretty damning that they were able to get an official letter from the royals asking for this privacy. She even stepped away from filming. So they were going into total isolation which is so different than how they behaved a few years later. I mean, maybe they got comfortable with the press and they found a way to take advantage of it, but I just know that people can tell that they are not acting genuine. They spoke about the difficulty of the media and being bombarded by paparazzi time and time again. Wouldn't doing a series like this just bring more attention on themselves? It's a funny one, isn't it? You know, um, as as the Palace uh, Buckingham Palace press office said after the Oprah interview, recollections may vary. I don't think there's any doubt that Prince Harry had an incredibly diff difficult upbringing in terms of that paparazzi. You know, mm. actually, that was probably the, the, the part of it that was really worth moving for me. You know, watching them on skiing holidays and and Princess Diana saying, "Please, can I just have some time with my children to have a holiday?" That must be awful to deal with. But you don't go asking for privacy. And then from almost the moment that you say you're stepping back, have a, have a camera crew following you and courting that kind of media. You know, if you work in the media, you know the way to stop a story is to say nothing. It's not to do a six part documentary. Now, before this series even came out, there were some spokesmen from the royals who were trying to dismantle it and the story that, you know, Harry and Meghan were trying to tell. They were also trying to find any little glimpse of something they could do to stop it from airing. For example, there was a black and white image used in the trailer of the couple going through the Queen's home, which the Majesty never approved of anyone filming in her home. So this image was not supposed to be used. They actually wrote out a statement well, rather a complaint from the palace saying that the couple never asked for permission to shoot inside her home and they actually issued some kind of warning. But of course, Harry and Meghan are so far gone, they could care less. When it came to this series, the royals had nothing to say about it. So there was no statement from the family. And driving up and he said, you know how to curtsy, right? And I just thought it was a joke. Like I curtsied as though I was like... Pleasure to meet you, your majesty. While there's no denying that Meghan had been treated fairly by the press, I mean, talking about your, you know, your home country's government, like Harry talking about the royal family, it's just really disrespectful, not only to your country, but the reputation of the queen. And I just don't think there's any coming back from that. Bethany Frankel, a former housewife, said, if you're being trolled by the media, the royal family gave you the advice to say nothing because that's the advice that most famous people are given. If you add gasoline to a fire, the fire blows up even bigger. I feel like they, and Meghan in particular, just wanted to tell us more. So rightfully so, the British tabloids do not like Meghan and them disrespecting the family. And a lot of people like Pierce Morgan for example, a former host of Good Morning Britain, actually had to leave the show because he was part of the media problem with talking so badly about Meghan that, yeah, you don't have to like her, but you don't need to dismiss Meghan Markle's comments about wanting to take her own life. I mean, she said at one point she wanted to, 
end things because everything was so bad. And that's something that Pierce Morgan said that he does not believe, which keep in mind, how would Pierce Morgan know anything about that? As I said earlier, Prince William was not happy about the series, especially how Harry tried to make him sound like he was a villain. Harry claimed that William had screamed at him, quote, it was terrifying to have my brother scream and shout at me and my father say things that simply weren't true. And my grandmother sit there quietly and take it all in. Megan then delves further into details of her alienation, noting that she was perceived by the palace to be a threat, as opposed to an ally who could help modernize the monarchy. Modernize the monarchy. Wow. She should have led with that. I mean, maybe she did want to, but yeah, it did not go down easy. <laughs> it was definitely not as simple as that. And while I do think everyone has the ability to tell their stories, the way that they describe their time at the palace is what I think rubs people in the UK the wrong way. Megan talks about living in a small cottage on the grounds of Kingsington Palace, stating that it sounds really regal. Of course it does. But the Nottingham cottage is so small. The ceilings were so low, Harry would bump his head. And when Oprah Winfrey came over for tea, she said that nobody would believe how small their home was. But viewers noted that many of the couple's complaints were coming from a place of privilege, and that the two seemed intent on dragging out their feud with the palace instead of simply moving on. And I don't doubt that it was a small cottage, but also at the same time, like, is this really what you, the story you want to tell? Is this the most important part? Because a lot of people, I mean, in the United States, but also in the UK and around the world, they have bigger problems. So to watch your, like, kind of governmental leaders talk this way, it's not, yeah, it is it is very privileged. The cottage we were on living on palace grounds. grounds. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. what, that wasn't good enough? It's very regal, of course it does. It says palace in the name. But Nottingham Cottage, it was so small. The whole thing's on a slight, on a slight lean. It looks like bloody charming to me. It would be hard when you get Uber Eats, though. <laughs> Kensington Palace, no, not the palace, the cottage. It was just a chapter in our lives where I don't think anyone could believe what it was actually like behind the scenes. Ah, okay, okay, okay. so here's the deal. He's lived there for a while mm. before they got married. He's cool with it. She turns up and goes, um... No. Princess... Not castle. This person wrote, it's just really weird to watch two people who keep screaming, we want our privacy, we want the press to leave us alone, and then what is their special they put on Netflix, showing them and their kids and their life. It's like the Kardashians, except boring. Where do you go with this? If this is your career, talking about how humiliated you were, part of the royal family, it's hard to relate to, and it looks pretty terrific to me like th this entire little cottage that they were staying in it's just like yeah get a reality check please and it's not like megan came from another royal family she came from somewhat humble beginnings so um i just don't know why she's acting so brand new you guys may remember hearing about her father she's got an estranged father and there was a letter that was leaked and she never expected it to be leaked. She called him daddy, and um, people felt that this letter was leaked to pull at the heartstrings of the public. Actually, her former PR guru said this in court papers. Now, Megan says that's not how it went down, because she actually sued, I believe, the uh, the Sun was the UK newspaper publishing company that published the letter. And actually, this letter was written to her father after he was a no-show at her 2018 royal wedding. I think she only sued the Sun for about a dollar, so it was kind of like a Taylor Swift, Scooter Braun moment. But in an appeal hearing, lawyers revealed there was some correspondence between Megan and her former communications secretary, Jason. And they actually claimed that this letter written to her father was crafted in a way with the readership in mind. So... When she wrote this letter, she had her friend Jason help her so that if it were one day get leaked, it would look good on Megan's part. Jason said in his statement that Megan asked him to read the text of the letter, saying obviously everything I've drafted is with the understanding that it could be leaked. So maybe that Megan isn't necessarily planning on leaking it, but it could be leaked. Like she's going to keep her copy of the letter handy. And Megan must have been seeing the future because of course her father did that exact thing. I gave part of the letter to the Daily Mail. The man on Sunday had printed the private letter Meg had written to her father. This is the letter that the Queen approved. The letter that Granny and Pa urged her to write. It was a horrible letter. Very insulting and, and, and cruel. Why did you give it to the Daily Mail, part of it? Because uh, at the same time, the People magazine were coming out and with it. The fact that Meghan had shared with six other people, right? 
A lawyer told the court that the letter was crafted specifically with the potential of public consumption in mind because the claimant appreciated Mr. Markle might disclose it to the media. And supposedly Harry was in on it too. They requested specific cooperation within the castle to make this letter, I guess... I, she pro I mean, her dad is messy. Her mom is messy. Megan comes from, like, a dysfunctional family, which I totally get, like, most people do. So it is actually really, like, almost a little bit conniving that she knew writing this letter that it would eventually go to the press. Like, she just knows her father that well that she's able to, like, think 10 steps ahead and how she's going to make herself look better. Things in my letter are so hateful and so cruel that I wouldn't put it out. And that's more protecting her than myself. There was nothing in that letter to be ashamed about. A daughter pleading with her father to behave decently. It was a main letter, was it? Yeah, but I offered a lot of money for the letter. I burn it before I sell it. It is sad to see this father-daughter relationship play out in the media because clearly there are a lot of problems here and Megan doesn't really seem to have a solid family unit, which that can do some really terrible things to you if you don't have anyone supporting you. Ultimately, the judge ruled in Megan's favor saying that publicizing this letter was just awful. It was unlawful and it was excessive. And even though some of the news publications lost in that battle, uh, they weren't succumbing to Megan and and joining her side. This was not like a mutual agreement to be friendly going forward. Let's create an entire tab on our homepage with her name and just run constant stuff on this litigation and twist and turn things to create an implant with members of the public. They're saying this was all part of my strategy and tactic to, to have a better reputation. Then the defense says, we'd like disclosure from you. We need to access your email and your phone for this case based on these terms. Sorry, what? What does that have to do with this lawsuit? My darling wife has just been sent the skeleton argument of the ridiculousness of the mail case. Archie wasn't even born when you guys published the letter that I wrote to my dad. They are making more checks than the press. They will never settle. They will always push because they will use a privacy litigation to further invade your privacy like they did with my wife. Now, this court case should have been a shift for Megan. People should have seen her more as a victim and felt bad that they were posting the fake news and that she's got this complicated relationship at home. But really, people were focused on the fact that she had all these other people involved in writing this letter. Megan ended up apologizing for misleading the courts over her recollection of the information given by her aides of the writer of this letter. She said, I have at all times wanted to protect the privacy of those friends, while the defendant was, it seemed to me, doing everything it could to make this litigation as intrusive as possible. Now going into 2020, after all of this beef, they decided that they're going to leave the royal family, but it did not go over without a fight. They claimed they were stepping down as senior royals, citing privacy concerns. Meghan then staged a paparazzi shoot. She's staring at the camera and smiling while almost dropping their baby. Now I wouldn't say this is almost dropping, but she did end up suing over these photos being taken and published. And now because they have all the paparazzi on their backs, even though, you know, it didn't seem like she was really in danger from the paparazzi there, um, you know, Harry wanted to have a lot more security. He felt like as a royal, the royal family should be taking care of them extra because they are so high profile now. While in the States, he actually requested that the UK starts to fund his personal security across the world. While his role within the institution has changed, his profile as a member of the royal family has not. So he wants to drop the title as a prince, but then start Still be treated as such. He's claiming that he can't even go to the UK now because he does not have the proper security and he wants his children to learn about his country. So at this point, there's a lot of blasts of information from these two. We've got Megan with the paparazzi smiling, but then suing them over it. We've got Harry over here saying, I don't want to be a royal, but I want the royal treatment. At the same time, there are tons of blind items coming out about these two. The illiterate one and her husband are getting slightly better at making photos look like they were randomly taken. They still need a lot lot of improvement. Let me know the next time you can get within 10 feet of them from behind with no security in sight. By the way, the family in front of them in the Halloween photo asked for a photo and the couple said no. And again, this is allegedly Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. 
Now let's get into some of the rude and entitled behavior we've seen from Meghan and Harry. I mean, you've probably already seen a lot at this point, but there's way more. In 2018, there was a trip to Australia and there were rumors that Meghan threw hot tea at staff when she got angry because they didn't do something well enough. In 2018, she hadn't even been with Harry that long, but she made herself right at home because she was bullying the staff and they even launched an investigation into the allegations. There were reports that Meghan left behind a lot of broken people. But of course, Meghan says that the palace is using the media to peddle a false narrative. She actually had a 16-day tour in Australia, New Zealand, and I guess Fiji and Tonga. It was with Prince Harry for just a few months after their wedding. The Australia tour is one of the most important in the royal world, but there have long been allegations of issues she had with staff. Some of the claims include that Meghan became upset at being given only a wing of the home of the Australian Governor's General's official Sydney residence. So this big guy's mansion, she's given a wing of it, but she wants the entire house. And of course, on one occasion, she reportedly lost her temper and threw a hot drink on them. Like the, like what? That is crazy. That's like Zeus bad girls material, like not royal family behavior. Much has been made of the allegations that Meghan bullied her staff at the palace. Hey, From yeah, what space, you've researched, does that fit her personality type? Well, absolutely, because her conduct towards uh, the crew, an 80-man crew in Canada when they were filming an advertisement for Reitman's, a chain store in Canada, was an example of aggressive behavior towards the whole crew and I discovered a pattern which fitted into the behavior which the palace staff accused her of also bullying. This report claims that the trip highlighted the gulf between the reality of royal duties and the expectations that Meghan had. She said palace life is different than what people imagine it to be. Like boohoo Meghan it's so much harder to be like a princess than not. When Meghan discovered that there were hundreds of people waiting outside the house to welcome the newlyweds, Meghan reportedly said to the team, what are they all doing here? It's silly. The source told the Times that Meghan was informed they're here because they admire and support a monarch and an institution that you're representing. They added that Meghan just didn't get it. A reporter for the Daily Mail claimed that she was on the scene and she witnessed Meghan turn and hiss at a member of her entourage, clearly upset and full of rage about something and demanded to leave. She said, I saw that same female, highly distressed member of the staff sitting in an official car with tears running down her face. Our eyes met and she lowered hers, humiliation etched on her features. So, oh, poor girl, they just yelled at by Megan and it just doesn't sound like you can please her. Of an agent who was trying to help her, who just said that Megan was undoubtedly the worst person he'd ever had to work with in his whole of his life because she bullied him so mercilessly. So there is this aspect to her. She smiles and she's charming and does have the appearance of being benign philanthropist. But in reality, she is tough and tough in her own interests. What I don't admire is the treatment of people on the way, so you, which was vicious. And that is all part of narcissism. She's a very selfish, self-promoting person who really takes no, no hostages and is quite determined that what Meghan wants, Meghan gets. One of Meghan's personal aides, Melissa, actually retired one month after the tour. So it sounds like the trip to Australia from hell. And I guess there's a Sussex Survivors Club who were the people driven out of the palace by Meghan. Like she was so terrible that a lot of people quit. There was a lot of turnover and they had a, like a survivors group. A woman named Samantha who was an assistant private secretary to the Queen and was on Harry and Meghan's itinerary, uh, also left her post in 2019. With these people leaving their jobs, that's a real thing. At the end of the day, the palace is a business. So if there is a lot of turnover, there's going to be an investigation into it and they're going to figure out the truth. Those bullying charges against Meghan Markle aren't going anywhere. Valentin Lowe, author of Courtier's Intrigue, Ambition, and the Power, players behind the House of Windsor, tell page six exclusively that the palace aides who quit, claiming they were bullied by the suits alum, are sticking to their guns. Quote, the people I spoke to are absolutely still sticking to their story, claiming that Megan bullied them, he says. Continuing quote, I can't speak to the truth of that, of course, because I wasn't in the room and I haven't heard Megan's side, he continues, continuing quote, but my sources still very much stick to their story. 
Days before Markle and Prince Harry's explosive 2021 sit down with Oprah Winfrey, the Times of London alleged that the Duchess of Sussex occasionally reduced staff members to tears while they lived at Kensington Palace. Two senior members of the palace staff were allegedly bullied into leaving their jobs, the UK newspaper reported. Quote, I'm very concerned that the Duchess was able to bully two PAs out of household in the past year. The treatment of X was totally unacceptable. Continuing, quote, the Duchess seems intent on always having someone in her sights, Knopf reported, continuing... She is bullying Y and seeking to undermine her confidence. We have had report after report from people who witness unacceptable behavior towards Y. Now you guys know the media loves to talk about the royals. So as soon as they heard about this survivors club, everyone was all over it. And anyone who had any knowledge of Meghan acting this type of way went to the press and just solidified it, which I think is a big part of the reason why nowadays just people don't like her. There's like so many events and like this was a damning part. How are you going to have all these people work for you? For free, like you're not paying them and you treat them this way. And is it true that a number of the courtiers who work with her call themselves the Sussex Survivors Club? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, and it, it, what, what did they survive? I mean, uh, it, it was a very difficult experience for some of them. I think, as I revealed a couple of years last year, mm. there was um, allegations that Meghan bullied staff. I mean, there was, people talked to me of... Um, People being completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. Imagine having a job that completely destroys you. If you do, that is not the position for you. And I totally get it. Like work is so difficult, but like completely destroyed. Like I hope these people get some like therapy after. Melissa, who worked as Megan's personal assistant, also worked for Robbie Williams and Madonna. Robbie Williams. Hmm, I know Robin, but Robbie Williams. Anyways, she was part of the team that helped with their wedding in 2018. And of course, she quit working for Meghan just after six months. Samantha, as I mentioned, was an assistant private secretary for the Queen. She reportedly wanted to quit Buckingham Palace in 2018, but stayed on to help Meghan as she joined the Royals. But then once she became Harry and Meghan's private secretary, she was out. Samantha was head of HR and she worked with the family until 2019 where Megan pushed her overboard. <laughs> Not literally, but she just couldn't emotionally handle it anymore. Jason started working for the Royals in 2014. He actually was a crisis management expert in the past, but even that couldn't help Megan's case. Jason's interesting because he's the guy that read over the letter that Megan sent to her father. He worked for both uh, Kate and William and Harry and Megan until their offices separated because of that feud. Then he really started to work with Megan until he couldn't work there anymore. But now he is the boss of William and Kate's charity foundation, so he clearly picked a side. Now because these people were leaving their jobs, there was the Royal Probe, where the Queen launched this investigation into Megan's bullying. The palace released a statement saying they were very concerned and won't tolerate harassment. Megan said she was saddened by the claims and she denies them all. There's another story that is so ridiculous that I need to talk to you guys about. I mean, here's the kind of people we're dealing with. In 2018, there was an engagement interview. They said they had proposed when they were roasting chicken for dinner, but months later, it was published that Megan had verbally abused palace staff because she's vegan and could taste egg in some dish. Remember I said earlier in this episode that their engagement was rehearsed and planned? Doesn't sound like it went down that smoothly. Now, Megan's got an interesting relationship with food, which I get a girl, but she's a little bit more particular than I am because she went to go taste some food for her wedding reception. And she said that there needs to be macro bio, bio, biotic, macrobiotic alternative dishes for some Hollywood star guests who follow the diet of Zen Buddhism. Okay, interesting. Never heard of that before. Megan got really upset when she felt like she could taste egg in a dish when she was told there was no egg in there, which what does egg taste like? I feel like egg tastes like whatever you put on it. But she said, no, I can taste it. There is egg in this dish. A source said, I think there was a bit of an upset when suddenly the queen walked in because of course, this was the castle. This is her home. And she quietly took Megan to the side and said, Megan, in this family, we don't speak to people like that. I feel like you know you're in trouble if the queen is telling you to behave. It's like way worse than the teacher telling you to like, you know, be quiet and pay attention. It's like, this is the queen of England and she has to tell you how to behave. At the wedding, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle had a largely vegan menu. When we planned on the wedding, Meghan Markle was angry at the caterer for putting some egg in a soup that was supposed to be vegan. Where Meghan Markle acted a little bit too angry and said, do you even know what vegan is? Which seeing that angered Queen Elizabeth, who's worked with that catering staff for years. It was overheard that Queen Elizabeth was angry with Meghan Markle and told her we don't talk to staff like that. 
And it seemed like Megan wasn't shy about her nasty rage that she had against the staff. Megan reportedly had a falling out with Kate, her sister-in-law, over the way that Megan spoke to her staff. They had Christmas together in 2017, and Kate was shocked at how Megan talked to people. These two did an entire interview with Oprah to talk a little bit about these allegations and how Megan says that she is innocent, despite with like three people resigning and them all blaming her. Plus, this trip to Australia involved so many others that news reporters, you know, they even gave their statements because you could tell she was not being kind. Which is all really insane to me because how are you bitter and upset when you are dating and then marrying a prince? You've now got a huge career where you are getting a ton of money. I just don't know why she would not appreciate the moment. I feel like Princess Diana really appreciated every opportunity she had and she didn't follow all the rules, but she like when she broke them, she was like not malicious or being nasty mean. She didn't need like an, a, a bullying investigation. Then another issue happened after Harry and Meghan were married where Meghan Markle didn't like their trip to Australia. Then Meghan Markle told her coordinator she wanted to reduce her appearances saying it was too much work and she should be getting paid for doing this. Which to be clear, Meghan Markle was collecting money from this because Prince Harry at the time was receiving funds from the Crown Estate, which is a public-private partnership where the royal family makes money. And one of the final straws was when Meghan Markle yelled at one of her coordinators saying if she had the power to fire her she would. And Prince William was there who apologized to the coordinator who said she was doing a good job while she was crying. So maybe there was some mistreatment, but there's more to the story than their story with that. Now you guys know an investigation is an investigation and it does end. The palace concluded its investigation into the allegations made by Meghan's former staffers, but did not make the findings public. Meghan was probably really happy that they did not make the findings public. Um, I feel like it's interesting because... Uh, Make the findings public. What did you find? I mean, I feel like the best answer would have been like, oh, there was nothing found. But you guys know the palace, like they try to operate and I mean, it seems like I was going to say decent faith. I don't even think that's the case. But the fact they said that they were not releasing the findings opposed to no findings. I mean, I take away something from that. But I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about the family and the isolation and the drama amongst these people who are supposed to be tight knit. Now, Megan's father, we've got to talk about him because he has been so outspoken and public, which at first when I, I remember all this going on in the media and I kind of felt bad for Megan because I was like, wow. Why is her dad like out here talking? But I feel like he's kind of a victim of her manipulation. There is no denying that Thomas Markle shoulders some of the blame for the breakdown of his relationship with his daughter. This story is going to come out tomorrow saying that your father has been staging pictures and taking money from the press. And I was like, what kind of pictures? Before her wedding, he was caught out engaging in staged paparazzi photos in exchange for cash, something he now says he deeply regrets. I think Harry, Harry should take the lead here and try to put us back together some way. You think Harry should play the peacemaker? I, I, I think he should. Yeah, no. Now, I don't think Megan's father is an innocent man, and I don't know if he's a great dad. That's not for me to say, but supposedly Megan used her estranged relationship with her father to her advantage. Supposedly, Megan wanted her father to disown his two older children, make that public, and use his invitation to her wedding as an incentive to cut ties with her half-sibling, Samantha, who wrote a book, The Diary of a Princess Pushy's Sister, okay, a memoir, and that was one of the shocking re revelations that Samantha gave us. Samantha actually has been as outspoken as uh, Megan's father, which I think is just such a disaster. That's where I feel bad for Megan. Imagine getting into this position and then having your sister write a book and your father do all this press. And it's just like kind of embarrassing. Her sister, Samantha, also revealed that it was sad that their father never received a physical invitation to their wedding, which Oprah was there. Um, Alma Clooney was there. All these people that Megan has only known for a couple of months. Samantha reveals in her book that her father called her a few weeks before the ceremony and she asked him what's your plan for the wedding and she got a response of a few moments of silence she asked him again like hey dad like did you get invited to this wedding what's going on that's whenever he 
got this off his chest that Megan had asked him to go and disown the entire family, that he doesn't need Samantha and Tom, trying to turn her father against her other sister, to which he replied, you're asking me to disown my kids. I can't do that. I love you all equally. Upon hearing his response, a dismissive Megan said, I have nothing more to say. We have nothing more to talk about. At the end, her father watched from a television screen back at home in Mexico, and Samantha was joined by a German television crew for a paid television appearance, so she got her coin on her sister's wedding and wrote that book. Lost my dad in this. So him as my father-in-law was really important to me. So I asked him to walk me down the aisle, and he said yes. Is it worth dumping me for the rest of my life? Denying my grandchildren? Is it worth getting rid of her father? If Megan was here now, what would you say to her? Let's go somewhere and talk. And uh, I said, what's wrong? What, what, how can I, I fix this? How can I fix this? I, of course, I love you. Meg, I love you. I love my grandchildren. I, I love to see them. Uh, I'm open to any kind of conversation. Samantha was really upset that her father was being treated this way by Megan because she claims that he had been working really hard on a special speech for her, which he never was able to give her. On May 17th, Megan announced that her father would not be attending their wedding. The previous day, he had a heart surgery, so the only close relative at her wedding would be her mother, Doria. Unfortunately, Megan's relationship with her family kind of ends there. I remember her sister doing all of that press, getting all of that money, and you know, things have kind of died down, so they've gone back to their normal lives. But as you guys know, Meghan and Harry's lives completely changed when they dropped out as royals. In 2020, with little to no heads up to the royal family, they have published an announcement saying they were not going to do their job anymore, only the parts they wanted to, that they were going to keep these X and Y benefits. They didn't want to have the responsibility of being royals anymore, but they're still part of the family, so they put out this announcement which completely caught the palace by surprise. After their Netflix docuseries came out, they decided to give up their titles. They were not happy with the royal family and they felt like their response to them, like, you know, they keep hurting each other back and forth. So the next big thing they could do is to drop their status, which just makes the family look weak and it makes the palace look weak. Their statement reads, after many months of reflection and internal discussions, we have chosen to make a transition this year into starting to carve out a progressive new role within this institution. Hmm. We intend to step back as senior members of the royal family and to work on becoming financially independent. We will support the queen, but I guess they're not going to support as a prince and princess, which I don't know what other role they would fill. They stated that in their new lives, they would relocate to North America. And they're not leaving the UK completely, but they wanted to move to America and honestly just become celebrities, which is kind of sad because if you're part of like a monarchy wouldn't you want to stay back at your country this is your homeland like represent it be proud of it make it bigger and better and whatever you plan to do but no he's just like screening away to america where they got the cameras and the paparazzis while my wife and i were in those chairs gripping each other's hand the moment the lights go down megan starts crying i'm feeling sorry for her but i'm also really angry with myself that we're stuck in this situation I was ashamed that it got this bad. I was ashamed to go to my family. Because to be honest with you, like a lot of other people my age can probably relate to, I know that I'm not gonna get from my family what I need. Of course, after this announcement came, they put out a statement that they can't wait to share more about this announcement. Great, another thing to do a press tour on. The announcement, however, threw some of the relevant parties, including Harry and Queen Elizabeth, for a loop. One year after dropping the major bombshell, Harry asserted that he didn't blindside the monarch. He said, I have too much respect for her. Harry explained that he and Meghan felt a lack of support from the palace, and they were trying to tell them that they wanted a way out. They also felt like the British press just continually tried to ruin their marriage, so they wanted the 
I guess, the royals to do something. But then there's also, like, free press. Now, of course, the palace responds because they actually love to respond. They're kind of messy. But they put out a statement saying, Discussions with the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex are at an early stage. We understand their desire to take a different approach, but these are complicated issues that we will have to work through. Sounds like they're going to try to do some convincing on their part. But after this announcement went public, a lot of people had feelings. I mean, her father, her estranged father, expressed dismay may about the news and said i'm just simply disappointed prince william claims that he was blindsided by harry and Meghan's decision and statement william is incredibly hurt but at the same time he has his own family to focus on and is trying to move forward with his life which i totally get that i mean after everything that's gone down he's so done talking about the past and of course if they're gonna leave the royal family then they could like give all their reasons on why they're gonna leave maybe there are some rules now they want to have uplifted so they could share even more did you know that the exact moment Harry and Meghan decided to step back as royals was after the palace released a statement from Harry and William without Harry's permission. It was apparently right after news leaked that the couple wanted to move to Canada and William blew up screaming at Harry about the decision. Later that same day, tabloids correctly reported that William low-key like bullied Harry out of the family and the palace immediately was like, no, 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 let's put that rumor to rest and they put out a joint statement from William and Harry even though Harry did not approve or even know about it until it was out? So like, fake statements aside, this was even more insulting because Harry said him and Meghan were constantly asking for help from the institution, but they were like very hesitant and very slow to do anything. Even though William was hurt and Samantha Markle, Meghan's sister, is out here throwing shade, saying that Meghan is not respecting the institution, eventually they came to an agreement and they decided that Harry and Meghan will lose their royal highness titles. Harry, Meghan, and Archie will always be much loved members of the family. I recognize the challenges they have experienced as a result of intense scrutiny over the last two years and support their wish for a more independent life. His brother, Prince William, did not appreciate the uproar, and I'm sure he had to deal with a lot of the backlash because he's at the palace dealing with, you know, the queen and these people and hearing them out and watching the drama unfold while, you know, Harry and Meghan are out here on the red carpet. But despite the palace trying to put everything back together, they still are a little bit shady. And I do think that Harry and Meghan have a little like inkling of truth when it comes to the palace trying to set them up. But also I think the palace is just kind of calling them on their BS. Prince Harry is 35. The fact he was 35 and wanted to become financially independent. <laughs> why did it take so long? You need to move out. And you yeah. literally, he doesn't have a job. So he's like, dad, I need money. And his dad's like, I have to ask grandma. Because I don't money. personally have any money. No. I'm still living at home. <laughs> <laughs> They're all still living at home. Now the queen comes out. She makes a statement. Although we would have preferred them to remain full-time working members of the royal family, shade, we respect and understand their wish to live a more independent life as a family while remaining a valued part of my family. Harry and Meghan have made clear that they do not want to be reliant on public funds in their new lives. Bitch is clipping up her purse. Nowadays, I would say that Harry and William's relationship is a little bit beyond repair. Before they moved to Montecito, California, Harry's relationship with his older brother took a sharp turn. Quote, William is so tired and done with all the drama. Seeing Harry cut ties with virtually every aspect of his English life and identity is so hard to fathom. Their book, Finding Freedom, definitely did not help the situation because they were pretty much trying to present themselves as like captives of the royal family. So after this book came out, things between Harry and William got so much worse that I don't even think that they are on talking terms because he just feels like, I mean, Harry has completely changed. He's so calculated and he's just trying to control this narrative. That was one of the biggest reasons to leave. Feeling trapped and feeling controlled through fear, both by the media and by the system itself, which never encouraged the talking about this kind of trauma. But certainly now, I will never be bullied into silence. One of the biggest lessons I've ever learned in life is you've sometimes got to go back and to deal with really uncomfortable situations and to be able to process it in order to be able to heal. For me, therapy has equipped me to be able to take on anything. That's why I'm here now. That's why my wife is here now. That feeling of being trapped within the family is 
there was no option to leave. Now, remember when they left the royal family, they wanted to have an alternative title, but that fell apart. In February 2021, we learned that Harry and Meghan would not be returning as working members of the royal family. They have stepped away. They have moved to California. They have completely left everything behind. So the palace just kind of wants them off their roster. I mean, you don't really, you don't want to be here, then you don't get any of the benefits anymore. Now, a lot of their claims come from financial independence. They want to make their own money and they don't want to be tied down to these responsibilities, which I get if you're not passionate about the royal family, then, you know, don't be a part of them. But also, this man has never dealt with money in his life, and you could tell in their series and in his book that they do not know what they're doing. We'd need to find somewhere new and soon, and that would mean paying for our own security. I went back to my notebooks, started contacting security firms again. Meg and I sat down to work out exactly how much security we could afford and how much house. The question of how to pay for a home and security kept Meg and me awake at nights. We could always spend some of my inheritance from mummy, we said, but that felt like a last resort. Now, security is not cheap. It would cost almost $2 million a year to have security. And that's why he went on to go and sue the palace for paying for this bill, claiming that he is entitled to security because of his relationship with the family and the scrutiny. But can you imagine he doesn't even live in the UK and he wants the UK taxpayers to pay $2 million a year for him? He is suing the British government for refusing to pay for armed police protection whenever he's in Britain. It's only going to pay on a case by case basis. And Harry is so poor, as you know, it's not good enough. Joining me from London is Patrick Christie, star presenter of GB News. Patrick. Great to see you again. Does Harry seriously think that taxpayers want to fund his police protection for him and Meghan Markle after the way they've smeared and damaged the royal family over the last five years? I mean, this guy's so arrogant that I don't think he gives a damn about British taxpayers, to be perfectly honest with you. The fact is that if you're not going to do your royal duties and you're going to stick the knife in on the way out of this country, then you shouldn't have police officers on duty protecting you when you come to this country. That's not, I think, a controversial view. The Queen did issue a statement saying, of course, they're going to help him in some capacity, which kind of like irritated the public because like that guy in that in that news clip, like I would be really irritated too. like, do you really think you're entitled to this? But um, they did work out a little bit of a plan, but I want to talk a little bit about Oprah because Oprah is someone who's come up a few times in this video, like having, you know, going to the wedding. Uh, they had the tea and the little like, you know, cottage um, and Oprah and these two have an interesting relationship. There were 17 lies that Oprah allowed Harry and Meghan Markle to say about the royals. They all got debunked the next day and Oprah never asked for proof. Sounds very Oprah to me. I don't think she's one to hold anyone accountable. Pierce Morgan has not liked Meghan from day one and he claims that he does not believe a word she says and he says in this interview there were so many disingenuous falsehoods i don't understand really why i should have to believe people who are not telling the truth he says how do you feel about the palace hearing you speak your truth today i don't know how they could expect that after all of this time we would still just be silent if there is an active role that the firm is playing in perpetuating falsehoods about us. And if that comes with risk of losing things, I mean, I've there's a lot that's been lost already. I mean, she is an actress, so what do you expect? One of the lies surround Meghan and Harry's wedding, claiming that they had a private wedding with out witnesses three days before they exchanged vows. Pierce said, you know, she claimed they got married three days before the big global wedding that we saw on television. He said, I knew that it happened because they were just together with an archbishop, the most powerful churchman in Britain. And if it was just them two and this other man, that is illegal. If it's just the three of them. I guess he actually could be arrested, this archbishop, for conducting this wedding. But you guys know weddings need like witnesses and certain people to be there to confirm that it actually happened. And Pierce is saying that's not true, Megan, because that's not following protocol. Since Megan made the claim to Oprah, the Archbishop has denied legally marrying the pair, but refused to rule out a private vow. Three days before our wedding, we got married. Ah. No one knows that, but we called the Archbishop and we just said, look, this thing, this spectacle is for the world, but we want our union between us. So like the vows that we have framed in our room are just the two of us in our backyard with the Archbishop of Canterbury. and. <laughs> And that was the piece that just the three of us. Just the, 
Just really? yeah, the three of us. Just the three of us. Now the Archbishop is sharing his side of the story, telling the Italian newspaper La Repubblica, quote, I met the Duke and Duchess of Sussex several times in a private and pastoral setting before the official ceremony on Saturday, May 19th, 2018. That day was the day of the marriage. If I had signed the certificate on a different day, I would have been committing a serious crime. The marriage was celebrated on May 19th, but I, I won't say what occurred in other... Another lie that Meghan was caught telling was that she did not get any support from the royal family when it came to mental health. She broke down in tears in the Oprah interview saying at times she felt like she didn't want to live anymore, but was told by the palace that she couldn't get help because it wouldn't be good for the institution. Pierce really claims that he felt like she pushed this narrative that she couldn't get help because she went to two of these staffers and told them her situation and they said it wouldn't be good for the palace well he's saying that a lot of this family have been open with their mental health issues and he just does not believe that she would be in a place where the staff would tell her no you can't go and get help for having these like life-ending thoughts look i was really ashamed to say it at the time and ashamed to have to admit it to harry especially um because I know how much loss he suffered. Mm -hmm. But I knew that if I didn't say it, that I would do it. And I, I just didn't, I just didn't want to be alive anymore. And that was a very clear and real, and I said that I needed to go somewhere to get help. And I was told that I couldn't, that it wouldn't be good for the institution. One of the standout moments from this interview is when Megan said that she was silenced. Pierce said that this idea that Megan was silenced is completely ridiculous. Megan guest edited British Vogue magazine in the middle of her silence. Megan made 73 public appearances during her quote, silence. He's asking when exactly was she silenced because she's never been silent ever since she started dating Harry. On top of being silenced, Megan claims that she was also trapped by saying that her passport was taken away Way by the palace and that was so she couldn't fly away or take any flights pierce says that she took 14 flights some of them on elton john's private jet while she was simultaneously along with harry lecturing us about our carbon footprint is that possible that you can check yourself in someplace no that's what i was asking to do yeah you can't just do that i couldn't you know call an uber <laughs> to the palace yeah you couldn't just go you couldn't I mean, you have to understand as well, it's when I joined that family, that was the last time until we came here that I saw my passport, my driver's license, my keys, all that gets turned over. I didn't see any of that anymore. Now, that does sound a little bit ridiculous. While I could imagine they would take this information to, like, collect it, I can't imagine them stopping her from traveling, and they didn't. That's why I can't believe it, because we saw her all out and about. When her son Archie was born, she claims that he could not get a royal title because of his skin color. Pierce says Meghan said that there were several conversations while she was pregnant in which Harry was having a conversation several times with a member of the royal family about the potential skin color of the child. Pierce claims it's completely untrue that he would not be able to get a royal title because of his skin color, and it's something that, like, she's claiming as a lived experience which is completely untrue it's factually incorrect and this did not happen which i also feel like it would be a little bit like i don't know that does sound a little bit aggressive to be talking about the baby's skin color before it's even born and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born so there's a conversation it. with you with harry about how dark your baby is going to be potentially and what that would mean or look like Ooh. the problem with archie receiving a title is that he is not in the place to receive a title yet pierce says that boy was never going to be a prince until prince charles harry's father becomes king on the death of the queen and that will happen in whatever skin color archie is he's going to become the prince like that's just how it's been going for a hundred years. So for Megan to try to create a story saying that the decision to not give Archie the title of Prince was based on his skin color is a lie. Now is she deliberately lying? Is she completely delusional? 
I don't know and I don't care. Pierce also claims that there are certain things that Megan has said that just don't add up. Pierce says when a journalist does a journalist's job, which is to express skepticism about some of the more outlandish claims like a secret wedding, like the story about Archie becoming a prince and so on, even down to the small stuff. Like, she'd never had an interest in the royals, and there are pictures of her draped over Buckingham Palace railings when she was a teenager and so on. So essentially, Pierce is calling out the fact that Meghan claims that she never even knew about the royal family. Like, she got into it and did not even research before she got into it. Yet, yeah, there are pictures of her, I guess, you know, from the past where she was at the palace, and she very much knew who the royals were. I mean, I, mean, I don't know if you can go and say like, oh, she planned this entire like wedding and to marry him someday. But you're also you're not ignorant to who this family was. And now that you're a part of it, don't act brand new. I've never looked up my husband online. I just didn't feel a need to because everything that I needed to know he was sharing with me. Right. There's so much information that you can find of, of how she loved Diana and the Queen and, and how she was friends with with people that had certain links to the royals, how she was friends of friends with Eugenie and um, and even Harry, there's links to his Eton friends. So, yeah, um, I mean, it, not the smartest trick in the book, is it, to, to have all of these blog posts. But I think that the tick is coming back, so maybe there'll be more. It's interesting she's a fan of Princess Diana because she had the opportunity to like kind of become that and actively chose not to. In April 2021, Harry returned to the UK for the first time after Prince Philip had passed away. He was at the funeral and photographed talking and walking with William and Kate. A body language expert said that William did his best to open his body language towards his brother. You have to look at the fact that he turned it toward him. And so in that opening, that's saying, come on in, let's talk, let's chat. He didn't walk side by side, but he actually turned towards his brother. Would you guys know the experts love Love to break down every second of the royals, but maybe a death would be something to bring this family back together. Though a month after they had this funeral, there was a statement saying that the queen was unimpressed with Harry's latest interview and found it hurtful because he decided to go and do some interviews after his trip and he talked some crap. Charles feels tortured by Harry and his constant digs. He wishes he would just let it drop. The general consensus within the royal family is to ignore Harry's behavior. One insider noted that with the way that things are going, Charles may never forgive Harry, which hasn't gone down well with Elizabeth. But the Queen is proud of William for taking this approach, unlike Charles, and trying to be friendly to Harry. And even though these people might be more boring than the Kardashians, they definitely have their drama. And I felt like this was an episode I've been wanting to do for a very long time. So now that we have finished it, <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I have this on my desk. This is from a strip club in Florida that invited me out there to like honor me with free Britney something. And they gave me this crown and I keep it on my desk, even though like what is, this is the wrong country. This is not, this is not the UK. I'm like looking at the camera. It's like always. Yeah. Too, too. Yeah. I don't know. I think my hair is too. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, podcast episode. Email me what you guys want me to take a deep dive into next, and we're going to keep it going this year on the podcast. So um, lots to dive into, and if there's anyone who I should interview, let me know. I'm just like kind of, yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode, and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.